Melinda came up with the idea of the virus, the wildcard virus, a single retrovirus that uh, would have random effects. So every character would be different from every other character. And almost accidentally, because it wasn't part of what we were setting out to do, the side effect of the Jokers came in, you know, and the Jokers are the people who uh, are transformed by the wildcard virus, but not in a favorable way. Jokers are what make wild cards wild cards. Um, there have been comic book heroes and villains for decades, but we wanted to have something that could highlight the, the plight of people who are marginalized and societies that are marginalized. They're sort of our stand-in for, uh, for oppressed minorities, for people suffering from diseases. I mean, the AIDS crisis was obviously you know, at its height when we first began this. Um, and so we, we started to play with that. And what is it to be human? And what defines your humanity? The other thing about the Jokers was that this was a way for us to talk about social issues in a way that doesn't have as much heat on it. And I, I said in an interview, science fiction gives people a safe place to explore issues that, real world issues that can, can carry heat, that can make people uncomfortable. Uh, you can have these political discussions or discussions about race and gender in an environment that takes it a little bit at arm's length. And so I think that's what Wild Cards has done for us. We've been able to explore these kind of issues. Jokers, how it affects them is obvious. You can't hide from it. And although I think it would also affect you profoundly, there's also this thing about there's a different kind of community for them because there's Joker Town and there, there are people who are similar. And so I think that, I think that it, it has, in both cases, it, there's a profound effect, but one is more internalized and the other one I think is more externalized. In the beginning, the Jokers were such a reviled minority that they took to wearing cloaks to cover their deformities and elaborate masks, like Mardi Gras masks. And so there's still this tendency in Joker Town, there's mask and cloak shops, which I really want in the show, um, that sense that, but now it's mostly tourists who are buying it, you know, when the tour buses go through and they stop and buy a fancy mask, and oh, I was in Joker Town, look at this. Um, and, and of course, Joker Town is our, it's, it's the heart of wild cards, it really is. Um, it, it's, it's where people went, both aces and jokers, to interact. It's, we had great bars and, and strip joints, and you know, it, 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 it's a very real place to me. And I'd love, I can't wait to see Joker Town come to life at some point. I think the Joker set us apart from most of the superhero franchises, and the fact that this is very gritty and very realistic. But the Jokers are the, are the heart and soul of the wildcard universe because, you know, they show the other coin of the superpower thing. And it's, it's, I've written, I've had major characters in Jokers. One of my first, uh, also a major character was Chrysalis, who, was, who owned a bar in, in Wildcard uh, in, in uh, the Joker Town, which is basically the Bowery of New York City, because the virus was originally released over New York City in, back in 1946 and that had the highest infection rate, the most people, you know, infected. And her, her deal was, her skin and flesh were totally transparent. So if you, you would think of the old model of the visible man or the visible woman, you know, when you were a kid, you know, that's what she looked like. Um, and, you know, not a, to some, not a, you know, to many, I guess, really not a pleasant sight, but nevertheless, she became a, powerful and respected person in the community uh, for who she was. She was a secret uh, information broker. She would collect all the secrets and she knew what was going on all throughout town and stuff. Um, but there, you know, it's, it's a story of, you know, ordinary people, in their case, with extraordinary, fighting extraordinary odds yet living their lives. And that's what we have a lot of in the wild card universe. I think the Jokers are our major contribution to this kind of mythos. But the Jokers are the underclass. Okay, the Jokers are characters who are uh, handicapped in some significant way. They're uh, grotesque looking. Uh, they have strange powers. Um, they're in many cases very troubled. Uh, and so they are the underclass in our wildcard society. And a great many of the stories are told from their point of view. 
Um, so they are a persecuted minority, um, contrasted with the few very famous superheroic characters who are the aces. They're monstrous, they're twisted, they're deformed, and they became our, our symbolic analog for many marginalized groups or uh, oppressed minorities and uh, more marginalized and more oppressed than many other people because they don't even share any characteristics with each other. And the Jokers and the Joker Town have been a very important part of uh, that 